I'm very glad to welcome all of you on our strategic HR course. And today we have class number one about strategic HR model. So we are going to talk about uh, what does it mean to be strategic? What's behind that? Why strategic is different from just operational or just usual HR, right? And uh, yeah, so uh, the course, what's in it for you? If you want to participate in this course, what will you take? First, the ability to take leadership role in HR. If you want to be HR director or senior HR, no, whatever, like uh, head of uh, recruitment department, head of total rewards or anything, you need to know about strategic HR. Willingness to develop HR strategy in the company. If you have this task, you'll need to know the information. You need to have tools, uh, to have the approach, the process. And that's why we will receive this during the course. Um, then the ability to communicate with the business in the same language. Because business always think about strategic, about strategy, about uh, financial results. And in HR, we usually talk about people, right? So when, you, when we take strategic approach in HR, we are starting talking the same language business use. And of course, becoming strategic HR business partner, it's not about the title, job title, it's rather about the role, uh, the role that you play in the company. You can be HR generalist, HR manager, HR specialist, but when you know strategic HR and when you start applying this knowledge, you are becoming strategic HR business partner. Um, it could be in every HR role, right? So in every HR job, it's rather how you act than what's written on your organizational structure. Okay, so the course website is following. It's SHRM and and course program consists of perfectly developed eight classes. Today, we are starting from strategic HR model, and then we will talk about strategic HR management and the strategic role of HR. Then we will learn how to develop HR strategy, starting from HR audit and uh, running some HR surveys, and then, of course, creating the strategy. And then we will learn specific strategies for different HR directions, like organizational development, improving company effectiveness, engagement and talent management, reward strategies, and international HR. So this course covers like everything in strategic HR and everything about HR strategy. And our today's program, our class program is about HR concept. We will learn what it is and how it works. HR architecture, the context of HR work, how HR affects the company's business, ethical component in HR work, which is very important, and HR in small companies. That's our plan for today, so let's start. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Mike Pritula, and I have 17 years of uh, HR-related experience in different industries. It was bank first, Alpha Bank, which is now Sense Bank. Then it was media company, TV channel actually. It was STB channel uh, within Starlight Media. It was game development company, what gaming. Then it was teeny startup, but now it's kind of middle sized company. It's probably it's uh, international marketplace for tutors for like different languages, not only languages, but also skills. Then ideas, a B2B SaaS company. And I started to develop my first HR strategy. It was at Starlet Media. I was deputy head of HR and I needed to help my boss to develop the HR strategy. And I, I started learning about the HR strategy, different templates, approaches, examples, and everything. And we developed, I think, uh, three or four HR strategies at that time. At Wargaming, I, uh, I helped Total Rewards team to develop Total Rewards strategy and implement Total Rewards strategy. And I was responsible for the biggest uh, offices 
three offices of the company that uh, took um, about half of the overall staff, right? So it was like kind of 2,000 employees. Then, of course, at startup, which is pre planned at Ideals, I uh, created chart strategy, and it was from the scratch because before be, uh, before I joined the company, there uh, there were no HR department, just a recruiter uh, in Ideals and pre plan And I developed chart strategy, and then I was responsible for implementing the chart strategy. So that's my experience, and now I have my Marketing like Talent Academy which one of the biggest talent academies uh, for human people, for HR people. And I also HR advisor for people force the all in one HR system uh, for every kind of a company. And in my work, I always uh, use best practices. I learn from them. I learn different studies and researches. Uh, and I share this information with my students. Right, uh, so my knowledge is backed um, with all this knowledge and researches and models and everything. And our course also have homeworks that will help you to try this knowledge and apply them to your company and receive the feedback from myself and for all your homework um, submission we will issue a diploma for you with your name and with a course name. And you will be able to attach this diploma to your LinkedIn profile, which will look perfectly. And we issue our online diploma on the top platform, which is used by so famous companies like Google, like Zendesk, Harvard Universities, uh, University, and others. So today, We'll talk about, I would say, theoretical part of HR strategy. Very soon, on our third lesson, you will learn how to develop your HR strategy and you will receive the template, which is very well developed, which is very detailed, which is uh, like uh, everything you need just to fill it and apply it into your company. And it also has an example. I will also share the HR audit template that will help you to prepare uh, for creating a chart strategy. But you will you need to know what, what kind of knowledge stands behind that. You can't just fill the templates. You need to know. You need to know how to explain to business leaders. You need to know how to make decisions, right? So that's why we are starting from theoretical part today, but tools are coming very soon. And also, I advise you um, to fill this, I, I call it HR knowledge checklist or power checklist for HR knowledge. And it will help you to understand what HR directions you already know perfectly and what you may need to know, like different tools in different directions, like total rewards, uh, talent acquisition, talent management, and so on. And uh, I recommend you to fill the checklist and to see if you know everything. It's not about the strategy preparation. It's rather about strategy execution. So after you develop your strategy, you will need to execute it. And with uh, this checklist and then with the course, which is recommended after the checklist, which is Power HR, you can uh, execute your strategy well. So just click this link this is the link and to fill the checklist you need to make a copy just uh, click file and make a copy and after that you may um, you may check all the points here and uh, see the overall score of your HR knowledge so let's start from uh, let's start our today class and let's start from uh, the very general idea what is the human resources because when we say HR or human resources, we need to know what's uh, what's in it. So human resources are people, but not just people as human beings, right? It's also about their knowledge, skills, social connections, energy, physical and emotional health, intellectual ability, personality type, and motivators. That's why 
create an HR strategy, which is human resources strategy, is not as easy as creating the company strategy or financial strategy or marketing strategy, because it's not just about numbers. It's also about some kind of psychology, psychology, people behavior, people understanding, people motivations, and so on. That's why uh, we need to learn a lot about HR strategy before we start developing it. What is human resources management, HRM? It's about how people are managed and employed. A philosophy about how people interact with the company. You see, philosophy, philosophy, psychology, people behavior. That's why it's um, our task to develop the perfectly matched HR strategy based on ideal people understanding, right? Based on a number of theories about the behavior of employee and organizations, what I just said. It's about improving organizational effectiveness through people. And at that time, at the same time, about interacting ethically with people. Because people are not equipment. and uh, They are not machinery. They are people. They are human beings. It's based on HR strategies that builds on the business strategy and incorporates the application of practices and policies from all HR disciplines. Actually, human resources management, sometimes they call it people management because the term HRM is criticized because people are not a resource like other inputs or, or production. So you may see people management and uh, talents. So for example, in Riot, at Riot, they call it talents. At Google, you may know they call it people operations, but we will, call it HRM or HR strategy or just HR, but we will understand that it's not about just resources and it's also about the people and their motivation, their behavior, uh, psychology, philosophy, and uh, so forth. How it works, how this human resource management works. Through HR architecture of systems and structures, of course, linear management that works with people directly, because you know, if we want to introduce the OKR system in the company, which is objectives and key results, of course, we can choose the system, we can teach people how to set their objectives uh, within OKR framework, but we also need line management support just to run the process, right? So we can't uh, approve objectives without line management. And of course, HR function. And by HR function, we mean HR team and HR process and, and everything. So this is an example of human resources architecture, right? So it's human resources management, which is stands on HR philosophies, and then a lot of different HR strategies, policies, processes, practices, and programs, which are influenced by internal and external context. And of course, which consists of different directions. So we have so many different directions in our HR work. And in this course, we will try to cover everything, right? With the HR OD checklist, with the HR strategy template framework, and with specific classes that target specific HR uh, strategy or HR direction, like organizational development, talent management, rewards management, and so on. Okay, let's continue. The concept of HR management, initially based on philosophy drawn from a set of theories created by the psychology of human behavior. You know this theories, you know this psychologist, right? Like Maslow, Gersberg, Daniel Pink, which is a recent uh, psychologist, includes elements of strategic management, of course, because uh, it's based on each on company strategy and actually human resources management is part of business management. So of course, it's also about management, about numbers, about finances, about business, not just about people. Elements of human capital management and industrial relations. Objectives of HR management. And this is very important for understanding because sometimes 
you'll see people talking about just people. I, I mean, HR professionals, they talk about people, they care about people, which is very important and obvious. But it's not just about people. It's people working in business because the business purpose is to generate the revenue and to generate the uh, people value growth, right? Uh, not people company value growth. So objectives of HR management is to support the organization in achieving its objectives by developing and implementing human resources strategies integrated into the business strategy. And we call it strategic human resources management. Promote a high performance culture, ensure that the organization has the talented, skilled and engaged people it needs. Create a positive employment relationship between management and employees and an atmosphere of mutual trust and, of course, respect. And encourage an ethical approach to managing people. And again, you'll see this word ethical again and again because it's very important to be ethical. Even if you want to obtain the HR certification like uh, HRCI certification, let's say speech or I, you will learn about ethical approach as well. And you'll need to uh, make sure that you know ethical approach, right? So it's the requirement to pass the exam. HR philosophy, human resources policies should be integrated with strategic business planning and used to reinforce an appropriate or change an inappropriate organizational culture. Human resources are a valuable source of competitive advantage, especially in our nowadays business, which is intellectual business, right? So the biggest companies like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and no, Tesla and other, they rather, they rather like uh, intellectual business. Of course, for example, Tesla, they produce, uh, they produce cars, but it's not just the cars. It's a very well developed cars with some kind of artificial intelligence, which is developed by people and programmers, of course, and they have much more programmers than I think any other car company. They can be most effectively utilized through mutually agreed policies that encourage commitment. It fosters a willingness to start of staff to act flexibly in the interest of the adaptive organization's pursuit of excellence. That's what HR philosophy. Theoretical basis of HR management. HR management has a strong theoretical base, and you'll see like I know dozens of different theories and of course publications and books and everything and you may just open that playlist on YouTube and see so many people talking about uh, something uh, in the HR philosophy and HR psychology sphere. So it builds on the theory of agreement and motivation as well as other theories of organizational behavior. Fundamental theories for HR management. Theories of motivation, which is very important. Actually, we talk about motivation very often in HR, right? Theories of engagement. I would say engagement replaced motivation because we uh, now measure engagement more often than just uh, satisfaction or motivation, right? So kind of Gallup Q12 uh, survey we use very often comparing to just general satisfaction survey. Other theories of organizational behavior and resource theory. Theories of motivation. Motivation theory, especially expectancy theory and goal setting theory explains the factors that influence employee behavior in the presence of goals. And actually presence of goals is very important and that's why OKR is spreading so quickly and so well adopted uh, among the most successful companies nowadays. The theories are used in HR management to manage engagement, rewards, and performance management. I would say the most important directions that has direct influence over employee performance and as a result of company performance. Resource theories. Resource theory states that companies' competitive advantage 
is achieved if the company's resources are valuable, they are unique and expensive to replicate. Like being a competitive advantage for the company, right? Because as a, you know, you may easily copy any technology. Nowadays, one company develops something and then it's quickly copied by another company. But people, it's hard to copy. And uh, this example, which is very funny, how Elon Musk uh, dismissed so many engineers from Twitter and Meta hired them and started Threads application, which is now a competitor to Twitter, right? That's why you see, I think it was difficult for Meta to run kind of Threads application as a competitor to, uh, to Twitter without these engineers that already know how to run this kind of business. That's why, that's why people uh, is competitive advantage and is everything for the company. HRM plays a major role in ensuring that human resources meet this criteria. Social exchange theory, which is the next one, talks about people feeling an obligation to thank those who have done them something good. That's why company introduce so many benefits. That's why company builds perfect offices, take care of employees, focuses on employee experience. Why? Because they know if they give something to people, people will return based on social exchange theory. A sense of loyalty, obligation, and sustained effort are somewhat of a social response by employees to a good employer. And that's why it's very important to be a good employer to your employees nowadays. And that's why HR branding or employer branding is very important. Uh, this better place for work mark is so demandable and so popular. So companies, they want to obtain the certification. That's why Glassdoor is so popular because people want to learn about the companies and companies, they want to obtain the highest possible mark. And that's why they focus on how they can obtain this mark, what they can do for people to be a best employer. Employees will reciprocate with their contribution to the company's business if they feel that the company treats them well. This theory is also based on the exchange theory between leaders and their employees, which focuses on the two-way relationship between leaders and their employees. Then stakeholder theory, which is very important because HR is very complicated role. We have so many stakeholders. We can't compare ourselves to marketing department, sales department, or other departments. They don't have such many stakeholders. We work for people. This is one of our stakeholders. We work for managers and we help them to manage their people. This is the second stakeholder. We work for the CEO, which is the main person, the company, and then we work for shareholders because they also want from us uh, to create the best place of work company and to, uh, to build good reputation of their business on the market because the reputation of their business is their own reputation, right? So we have so many stakeholders and that's why stakeholder theory is so important in HR strategy. Various groups within the company are stakeholders, including shareholders, managers, employees, customers, the community as a whole. Organizations should consider this interest as a whole. HRM models. Over the years, a large number of models have defined what HRM is and how it should work. The FIT model and the Harvard framework have been the most influential. Of course, you may find even more HRM, HRM models and they will appear like uh, I expect new HRM models will be developed and lots of different companies, schools, experts always are working on that and trying to implement something new like Josh Berson, like Dave Ulrich and other guys. But let's learn some of that 
for understanding what's HRM model and how it works. So let's start from the first one, which is compliance model or alignment model. It was established in 1980, uh, 1984, and uh, it was about HR systems and organizational structures must be managed in a way that aligns with organizational strategy. This was the first steps towards strategic HRM. So strategic HRM, uh, I would say, started in about this years, 1984, something like that. Then Harvard HRM model. HRM includes all managerial decisions and actions that affect the nature of the relationship between the company and employees. It also focused on the long-term treatment of employees as an asset rather than a cost. The model emphasizes the responsibility of line managers in HRM. They should take more responsibility for synchronizing competitive strategy and HR policies and HR mission to define policies on how HR activities are developed and implemented in the company with maximum efficiency. So this is an illustration of Harvard model. So we have some stakeholders, we have situational factors, be influenced by that, we develop HR policies, which generates HR outcomes, and these HR outcomes, they have influence on long-term consequences. And this influence in company financial results. Then next contextual HR, HRM model, which is very important because uh, context is changing all the time. Like quarter to quarter, we see so many things, uh, new things appear, so many events happening in the world. So we need to take, uh, and we will learn how to do that, right? So we, we need to take some attention to that. Draws on the importance of environmental factors that influence HRM practices, such as the influence of political forces and social institutions, which have not been considered in other models. It is precisely this model that determines the influence of external and internal stakeholders on HRM. Then 5P model. 5P because uh, we have five layers and they start from P war. HR philosophy, how the company treats employee, what role they play in the success of the business, how they should be managed. Then HR policies, recommendations for action in relation to people and in the development of HR programs and practices based on strategic needs. HR programs is defined by HR policies and consists of coordinated HR efforts to initiate and manage change. Actually, I also, I also call HR programs HR products. HR practices, these are the activities undertaken in implementing HR policies and programs. It includes recruitment, training and development, performance management and compensation, employee relations and administration. And HR processes, formal procedures and methods that are used to implement strategic HR plans and policies. We are talking about HR models. It doesn't mean you need to learn and remember every HR model, right? Because our HR strategy and the template for HR strategy that I'm going to share with you soon are based on all these theories. So everything is included into the strategy. And as I mentioned before, we just learned the theory behind the file, behind the tool. So we just exploring some new information, some basic approach to better understand how HR strategy is developed, why we have something in HR strategy, because you will see that, for example, in HR strategy, we have HR mission. And if you don't know why we need HR mission in HR strategy, then you can't answer your business leaders why you put HR, HR mission, why it's important let's delete it, or why you start from company culture in HR strategy. Uh, is it HR strategy document or company culture document? And if you don't know the explanation, it's hard to approve the strategy, hard to some kind of explain something in that, and of course implement that. And if you know, you know, that's easier. Uh, next model, 
Actually, I like this model because uh, I like when we combine business and people. Hard and soft skills model. Introduced and distinction between hard and soft versions of HRM. Hard focuses on the calculation and business management of human resources in a rational way, like any other economic factor. And soft focuses on the basis of human nature, based on the communication, motivation, and leadership. So these were HR models and HR management today focus on the fact that HR needs to be strategic and business-based to create value for the company. And it went through a number of different trends like human capital management, engagement management, talent management, competency management, electronic human resources management, high performance, performance management, compensation management, so on. Now we are in the phase of AI uh, approach in HR, and it will uh, be it will be replaced with other trends. So it's very important to know all these trends and again to take consideration of this into HR strategy. Human capital management. These are the knowledge, skills, abilities, and capabilities of employees that are capable of adding value. Views them as asset that can be invested in through their acquisition and development. Emphasize that it is necessary to evaluate the contribution of employees to measure the effectiveness of HR practices that are used to manage people. And this later evolved into HR analytics. Human capital consists of intellectual capital, its employee knowledge, social capital, knowledge available through external relations, and organizational capital, knowledge that is stored in the company in databases, instructions, and so on. Human capital is based on finding answers to these questions. What actions create value for the company? What skills do we have? What skills do we need now and in the future to achieve our strategic goals? How are we going to attract, develop, and retain these skills? How can we create a culture and environment in which employee learning meets both their needs and the needs of the company? How can we find, retain, and effectively utilize the knowledge gained within the company? So these questions are very important and it's also very useful for your company, for yourself, to try uh, to answer them. Strategic human resources. The company's decision to integrate HRM into the business in such a way that human capital is maximized to achieve the company's strategic goals. And it's about systematically connecting people and companies. What strategy? And next lesson, we will learn what's the strategy in general. And we even will learn how the company develops the strategy. Because the way the HR develops the strategy is quite the similar to the way that company uses when company develops the company strategy. And let's say you are about to develop the HR strategy and the company doesn't have company strategy. So you may advise the company to develop the strategy and you may want to hire a uh, facilitator, strategy facilitator to organize the strategic session. So it's very important to understand what's the strategy. Strategy, it's about defining the company's long-term goals and developing a course of action together with the allocation of resources required to achieve these goals. And of course, human resources that are a very important part of all the resources in the company. Three fundamental characteristics of strategy. Looking forward, where we are going and how we will get there. A company's capabilities are determined by its resources. The strategy aims to achieve strategic alignment between different functions. Purpose of strategic HR management. Create opportunities for the company by ensuring that the right professional, engaged, responsible, and motivated employees 
are in place to create a competitive advantage. And they are the part of these resources that we mentioned here in company strategy. Resource management strategy, focus on creating companies that are more intellectually advanced than competitors and focus on hiring and developing more talented employees than competitors do. Business feed strategy consists of developing an HR strategy that aligns with and supports the achievement of the business strategy. Best practices strategy implies that there are best practices in the world. Actually, this is what we are going to learn through HR audit checklist because what is HR audit checklist? It's about comparing our companies to best practices in every direction. So when we apply best practice strategy to our company, it applies that there are best practices in the world in the sense that they are universal and that they are the best in any situation and adapting them to one's company will result in the highest performance of the company. The nuance is that the mistake is made that they can easily be incorporated into any business without training. So we not just incorporate, we learn how to do that. Best fit strategy uh, is another important approach. A charge strategy should be in harmony with the state of affairs in the company and the circumstances of the business. It is more realistic than a best practice strategy. There is a risk that the HR will turn into a service only serving the business, right? So it's not about fitting the business, it's also about the leading the business. What defines a strategy? Human capital management, working with analytics that show how people are managing the company, knowledge management, how knowledge is acquired, shared, and retained in the company, corporate social responsibility, the ethical conduct of business to positively impact the environment, engagement policies that promote engagement, organizational development, improving organizational effectiveness, of course, recruitment, talent management, how company controls the availability of the right people, training and development, and compensation the company. Criteria for an effective HR strategy. Meet the company's business needs, the most important one, based on detailed analysis and research of company facts, not just with wishful thinking, can be translated into action. Integral and coherent components are consistent with each other. Takes into account the needs of managers and employees and other stakeholders. The ethical part of HR. First, it's about equality. Equality. Treat all employees equally, providing them with the identical employment, training, and development opportunities. Procedural justice. Ensure that management is fair, consistent, and transparent, as per Adams and Leventhal. Distributive justice. Distribute rewards based on contributions and fulfill promises to employees. Natural justice. Set clear standards and rules, provide feedback on performance, and give opportunities for improvement before disciplinary action. Employee engagement. Consider employees' views on decisions that impact them. Worker welfare and commercial advantage. Balance the welfare of workers with commercial benefit. Job security. Strive to provide as much job security as possible. Healthy and safe environment. Prioritize the health and safety of employees and strive to minimize stress. Work-life balance. Promote a harmonious balance between work and personal life. And protection against harmful practices. Guard against bullying, harassment, and discrimination in the workplace. This is the ethical part of HR that should be taken into consideration. Now, HR in small companies, startup, which is the beginning of every company, right? Owners fulfill the role of HR. No HR at all, not formally. Flexible roles, focus on hiring. Crown company, more needs to be delegated, higher the importance of people in the business. Someone is appointed as a person responsible for HR. Owner may decide to outsource HR role, such as recruiting and seek advice from consultants. Focus on creating policies and procedures, solving point problems like skills shortages, turnover. Consolidation. Assigned as a full-time HR person responsible for implementing HR practices. Focus on recruiting 
and talent management and established business a fully fledged HR department is created usually starts with an HR generalist with a set of assistants. Actually, at every company development stage, I recommend to develop the HR strategy. Even if you are the CEO of the company or the CEO, chief operating officer, you may want to develop the HR strategy. It's just to better align human resources or just people within the company strategy. Now the Humber. I will show you some strategic HR tools and I recommend you to apply one of the tools 1.3 or 1.7 or by your choice to your company. So your homework is the result of application of one of these tools to your company. And let's see the tools. The first one is the general structure of strategic HR management, the directions and questions to be answered. It's very useful to learn them and try to understand the answers. Then strategic HR activities and description of strategic HR activities and what kind of actions are incorporated. Analysis of the internal environment. This is, could be your homework. So you just answer these questions. So you create the spreadsheet, you list uh, questions, you put response and application for HR strategy of your response. Then analysis of the external environment and the set of factors and then how they impact on HR strategy and practices. Implementation of business strategy in HR, the table, HR performance studies, it's, it could be in the form of survey. And then the second option for homework, analyzing the effectiveness of HR strategy. So if you have kind of HR strategy, you just answer these questions and that's your homework. Then strategic gap analysis. You have uh, different descriptions for 10 points and for one point, and then you put marks here to whatever it's closer. And development of diagnosis. This tool is going to be used uh, in HR audit checklist document. So what's next? Today that's all. Next time we will talk about strategic HR management and the strategic role of HR and uh, the general company strategy and uh, how it's developed and from what it consists. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. I'm waiting for homework and see you soon. Bye.